Come on and bless them real good. Come on and bless them real good. Glory to God. Come on and give God a praise in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For it is his anointing that destroys every yoke. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Give God a yet praise. Glory be to God. In the midst of your circumstances. In the midst of your situation. In the midst of what you're going through right now. God deserves the praise. Hallelujah. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In good times. Hallelujah. In bad times. Hallelujah. Glory be to God when I feel like it. Hallelujah. When I don't feel like it. Hallelujah. Because we understand that this is something that you don't have to do. And we thank you for being a blessing to Divine Presence Worship Center. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Let's get ready to go into the Word of God. It's nothing like God's Word. Everything's going down. Come on, come on. But the word of God. Yes, God. I understand what the songwriter meant when he said, On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I understand, I understand. Glory to God. Because when everything else starts falling apart and going down, you can still stand on the word of God because his word is true. Glory be to God. And his word never fails. Glory to God. Everything else may fail, but one thing I have an assurance about is God's word never fails. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Amen. Let's go into the gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. And for right now, I just want to read one verse. However, we'll be traveling through several verses. But I want to look at the ninth verse. And the ninth verse says this, Amplified Bible Classic Edition. 
And he said, he who has ears to hear, yes. let him be hearing. Yes. And let him consider yes. and comprehend. Let him consider yes. and comprehend. Jesus. Probably most Bibles say, and he who has ear, let him hear. Glory be to God. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we enter into your presence this morning saying thank you. We thank you, Father, for all the many blessings because we realize that we are blessed. Yes. We thank you, Father, for the healings, for the deliverance. Yes. We thank you, oh God, for working miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. 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 You may have your seats. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Y'all, we were given ears for a reason. Amen. We were given two ears and one mouth. Which is interesting to me because that means we need to be hearing more than we talking. Oh my God. Uh oh. Okay. Amen. Okay. Because a lot of times we talk so much that we can't hear. Okay. what's being okay. said and what's being spoken you know okay. Okay. glory to God and we've got to hear that's the majority of communication is listening and then you listen and you share oh my God this is what goes on in relationships a lot of times relationships are one-sided because somebody's always talking and ain't nobody listening. They argue, they fuss, they feud, but nobody's hearing what the other one is saying. Uh, we're still in February, y'all. February is Black History Month. February is heart month. February is love month. <laughs> I was on my way here and I heard that this is the day that they assassinated Malcolm X. This is the day. You know? God is so merciful. God has brought us a long way. We have to learn to take advantage of the doors that God opens. Because there are still those that think they live in the 60s. <laughs> Ooh, God. But there are those that are giving opportunities and opening doors. May I encourage you this morning to seize your opportunities. Glory to God. Seize the moment when God is blessing. Seize the moment. Grab hold to the Spirit of God. When God is flowing through the house, seize the moment of the move of God. Don't let him pass you by. Songwriter said, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without Lord, don't do it without me. Glory to God. We've got to seize whatever it is. Go after that which God puts in your gut. You know, a lot of us are fearful. A lot of us are afraid. Glory to God. But we've got to go after. God downloads things into our spirit. He downloads.
downloads things into us. It's not by chance that we feel what we feel. It's not by chance that we start thinking about what we're thinking about, but God will download. It's not by chance that we dream some of the things that we dream. God downloads things into our spirit. And when he downloads them, we need to grab hold to it. Don't lose it. Don't let the devil snatch it. Oh my God. He who has ears, let him hear. You know, Jesus spoke this in the book of Revelations. He said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Oh my God. In this fourth chapter of Mark, Jesus is dealing with a parable that is known as the sower and the seed. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to take a moment and look through these scriptures. Amen. And talk a little bit about it. I want to talk about the matter of the heart, the matter of the heart. You know, it is about the heart. Where is our heart? Where is my heart? You know, you have to ask yourself, where's my heart? God, is my heart totally leaning and depending on you? Glory to God. I was listening to uh, Sister Alfreda on uh, the messenger post that she sent me and the powerful word that she spoke about God's love, yes. you know, and how God is everything to her. Yes. The Lord is her love. Yes. Glory be to God. A lot of us are going around looking in the wrong places for love, you know? We're looking to men and women for love. Glory be to God. But the first thing we need to do is get ourselves established in the love of God. We have to allow ourselves to be rooted in the love of God. Glory to God. And when we seek him first and we allow him to establish us, then he will add to us. See, this is the problem of why relationships are not growing because we're taking old stuff into new relationships. You can't take what Tom Jones did to you into this new relationship. So you've got to be purified. you got to be cleaned up. You've got to have relationship with the almighty God so that he can heal the wounds that the broken heart, that he can go into the secret places and bring deliverance because when he delivers us yeah. then we're ready for the next yeah, right. oh my right. God and women let me help you the Bible says the man he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing we don't have any business chasing after a man we don't have any business really even looking for him. Glory to God. What we need to do is look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And then God will send you who he wants you to have. A lot of us get in trouble because we lust instead of love. Uh-oh. We lust instead of love. And when things get tough and crazy, when it's not true love, the lust be done disappeared. 
And then you're left in the reality story. Amen. Glory be to God. Because when you really love somebody, you love them through their faults, you love them through their flaws, you love them with their issues, you love them. You know, you may not like what they're doing, you may not like how they acting, but you still have a love for them. And then what you do is you go into your secret place and you begin to cry out unto the Lord because your love is unique and your love is genuine. And you begin to talk to God for that husband. You talk to God for that wife in relationship. Glory be to God. See, we too busy talking at each other but when we take it to God and let God do it God will fix what needs to be fixed okay Lord Woo. we don't went somewhere we wasn't going amen glory to God but to God be the glory for the things that he has done I do want to say God bless you for visiting us on today. God bless you. We're glad to have you this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm going to gather that this is Sister Veronica's daughter. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We're so thankful for God blessing you. On today, in Mark, the fourth chapter, it says, and Jesus began to teach beside the lake, and a great crowd gathered about him, so that he got into the ship in order to sit in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was at the lakeside on the shore. The whole crowd was at the lakeside on the shore. And he taught them many things in parables. Those are illustrations, comparisons, put beside truths to explain them so that you would get a greater understanding of what he's saying. And in his teaching, he said to them, give attention to this. Behold, a sower went out to sow. I'm gonna gather he was talking to a group of farmers at that time because he used the illustration of sowing of seed. And as he was sowing, verse 4, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed of some kind fell on ground full of rocks, where it had not much soil. And as it sprang up, because it had no depth, of soil. And when the sun came up, it scorched. And because it had not taken root, it withered away. Other seed of the same kind fell among thorn plants, and the thistles grew and pressed together, and utterly choked and suffocated it, and it yielded no grain. And the other seed of the same kind fell into good soil, well adapted soil, and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing, and yielded up to 30 times as much, and 60 times as much, and even 100 times as much as had been sown. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him be hearing and let him consider and comprehend. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God's word. God's word is the seed that was being sown. Now, let's look at this first area that the seed was being sown. It said that some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. All right, this heart is the scariest because it is adamantly closed to Jesus. It's uninterested in hearing him and therefore unable to hear him. It's not interested, this heart, this heart, the soil represents the heart. The seed represents the word. The word was sown, but they were not interested in what was being said or what was being come, what was coming forth. It closed off to receiving from the Spirit of God, like the natural man that Paul speaks of in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, and the 14th verse that says, but the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's Spirit, because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it, since it is evaluated spiritually. Glory be to God. They don't want to hear the word of God. They're not open to the word of God. They don't believe that even God exists, most of them. And so when the word is sown, it just falls on top. It doesn't even sink in. Oh God. So it says the birds came. The enemy comes and snatches it up before it even is able to receive it. The enemy comes, Satan comes, yeah. and he snatches up that word, and he causes it to move forward. So it's like you didn't even hear the word. You know how we say sometimes to our kids, what I said went in one ear and came right on out the other. It didn't stop in between in order for you to grab hold what was being said. First Peter 5 and 8, Peter tells us to be sober-minded, be watchful, because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Can I tell you that Satan is always there? His mouth is always open. He's ready to always take seed away. Glory be to God. He will come and try to hinder you and stop you in any way that he can. Oh, glory to God. He will try to stop you. So now look. Another seed was sown of the same kind, the word of God. Yes. It fell on a ground full of rocks where it had not much soil. And at once it sprang up because it had no depth in the soil. This is that shallow heart. Oh, God, help us. That rocky heart. Oh, Glory be to God. <sighs> These are the ones sown on rocky ground. Yes. The ones when they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy and excitement. Uh, and they have no root in themselves. But endure for a while, somebody say a little while. A little while. Then when tribulation comes, persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. Yes. When you are not rooted and grounded in the word of God, when the wind blows, you're going to fall over. Yes. When the storm comes, you're not going to be able to stand. Glory be to God, because the word is fell on the rocks. Mm -hmm. 
where there was not much soil, which meant that the word was not able to take root because it's actually the roots that causes a plant or a tree to stand firm. When they have strong roots, it's not easy to take that tree down. That's right. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Father. With this heart, things are good for a little while. <laughs> a little while. But because God's word is never adequately considered, never chewed on, <laughs> never truly thought through, it's shallow like so many spring gardens in the hot summer that dies. When things get tough, the shallow and rocky heart leaves him for something else. When Jesus is treated in mere programmed terms, it's soon as he no longer works, when, when it seems like Jesus is not there. Yeah. We go look for another. Oh my God. Oh yes, yes, yes. For the rocky shallow hearts tried Jesus and found he's just all right. But not all right enough. Oh my goodness. In other words, I'm there long as I'm standing there. But when stuff comes against me, deuces, I'm up out of here. <laughs> church, you go through by yourself. I'm going to go find me another church. Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Uh, members, you go through by yourself. I'm going to go find me somebody else to hook up with. Oh, no. Glory be to God. We just put Jesus down. You know, let me go find another God because this don't seem to be working. You know what I'm saying? Are you the one? Woo! We're talking about the shallow <laughs> and the rocky heart. Ooh. Glory to God. Then we have the heart. Hmm. Hey, come on, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Speak, Lord. Let me say this. And when the sun came, it was scorched because it had not taken root. It withered away. That was verse 6. Amen. Scorched. Scorched. It had no covering. That was wrong with some folks. They ain't got no covering. They're getting scorched. Glory to God. They're running around just doing what they want to do without any covering. We all need covering. I don't care how high you're up in the fivefold, you still need a covering. Glory be to God. I understand that you have Jesus, but this is why He gave us one another. Oh, glory to God. He gave us one another for us to cover each other. We got to love one another. No man is an island. Even when God made Adam, he said it's not good for man to be alone. That's right. That's right. Oh God. Yes. Verse 7. Yes. It was another seed that was sown of the same yes. kind. God. And this seed fell uh, among the thorn and plants. Mm -hmm. And the thistles grew mm -hmm. and pressed together and utterly choked and suffocated it, and it yielded no grain. This is the crowded and anxious heart. Mm. Others are the ones sown among the thorn. They are those who hear the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful. 
We see this a lot. You know, people that love God. Yes. They come and they worship and adore God, but then all of a sudden, the things of the world begin to take them over. The love of money begins to take them over. You know, you got those that say, Lord, if you bless me with this job, come on. All the time they ain't had no job, they were in the Word, they were in the house, they were either watching TV on the Word, but Lord, as soon as they got a job, they were volunteering to work on Sunday. They weren't just put on the schedule, let me make that clear, but they were volunteering to work. The enemy begins to take your time. And so therefore, you're caught up in the things of the world. You begin to focus. Excuse me. You begin to focus on the things of the world. Glory to God. The cares. Thank you, baby. Come on and give God a praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Crowded and anxious heart. He didn't want me to get that out. That's all right. Get it out in a way. Yes. You know, we're caught up with the things of the world. Sometimes we're pulled by our friends. Yes. Sometimes we're pulled by our desires. Yes. You know, the things that the flesh wants, because you know the flesh act up. Yeah, exactly. And it tell you, I want this, I want that. And you go through everything to make the flesh make it happen. Right. But sometimes in this gospel, the flesh has got to suffer. Yeah. It's got to go without some things because the flesh needs to die. Yeah. Glory be to yeah. God that the Holy Spirit will yeah. supersede. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. The crowded heart is too has too many things at the same level of importance. In other words, everything is just as important. So now you've got all these things that look like they're just as important to you. And so you're choosing not wisely. Trying to uphold social status, comfort and security, personal desires alongside the magnificence of God. We're holding all these things up. Have we not learned yet? <laughs> That God is the most important thing in our life. God said, thou shall not have any other gods before me. He told us, I'm a jealous God. Glory be to God. So we've got to put God first and foremost in our life. Now let me tell you, there's a difference between God and the church. Definitely. Woo, glory to God. There's a difference between God and the church. That's right. A lot of times people are putting church stuff even in front of God. I got to do this. I got to do that. I need to run over here and do this. I need to go take care of the sick. I need to. God is going, excuse me. That's right, Pastor. Hello. That's right, Pastor. I missed my time with you. You didn't talk to me this morning. That's right. <laughs> because now we don't put all this church stuff yes. in front of God. Yes. Yes. But God is even jealous there. Yes. He's like, you got to see, you can't even do the church stuff right if you don't seek me first. Oh my God. You everything else in your life, you can't do it right with. Out me, but if you take me and you seek me first, I'll help you with everything else. I'll take you through everything else. I'll give you what you need, and I'm so bad, I'll give you the very desires of your heart. You ain't even got to open your 
your mouth. I mean, really. You know, I see your heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh, I see your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The heart of the anxieties and worries Jesus. about things that are out of its control. Jesus. Because it lets so many things control it. This heart has too many competing loves inside. Woo! Glory to God, hallelujah. And as Shakespeare said, these lovers seek a place to fight. These lovers are seeking a place to fight. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is first. Stop worrying about all this stuff. Worrying about how you're going to pay them bills. Worrying about, first name nobody told you to make all them bills? No way. Whoops. I'm sorry. Glory be to God. But God is able to help us pay them. Glory to God. But he's given us instructions and wisdom. Because, see, you've got to plan for the season. Since seasons will occur in your life. Things happen in life. We go through things in life. And so you have to prepare for the storm. Glory be to God. You have to prepare for things that are going to happen. Just because we love Jesus doesn't mean that we're not going to go through some things. Because the Bible lets us know that he reigns on the just and the unjust just alike. He didn't say what he was going to reign. Oh my God. The last heart that I want to talk about is he sows another seed. <laughs> and the other seed fell to good, well-adapted soil mm -hmm. and brought forth grain, mm -hmm. growing up and increasing mm -hmm. and yielding up 30 times as much and 60 times as much and even a hundred times as much as had been sown. This heart was a prepared heart. The soil was soft. The soil was ready. The soil was ripe. The soil was a good soil. This is the heart of Jesus' disciples. Those that desire him, those that love him, those that want to know more of him. The soil accepts his word. It represents the heart bent on following him. Even when it's hard. Oh God. The heart that desires to follow after God, even when following him appears hard. What you saying? Even when you've got to go through some stuff, even when you lost your job, even when you were blessed with a new job, your heart is still ready to follow him. Even when you had birth of a new child, even when you lost a loved one, your heart is still panting after God, just like the deer panted after the water. Glory to God. This is the heart that sticks with Jesus. This is the heart that sticks with God, even when it does not understand. Stand. Because sometimes things happen in life that we just do not understand. But that is not the time to run away from God. That is the time to draw nearer to God. Ooh, this is the heart that leans on him. Depends on him. This heart wants Jesus. The scripture says, but those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit. Oh God. 
Notice there were those that heard the word. But they were unable to reproduce. When you bear fruit, you're reproducing. When you bear fruit, you're growing from what you have received. Glory to God. So they hear the word. This good heart hears the word. It accepts the word. It doesn't turn it away. Glory to God, but it accepts it. It may not understand the word, but it still accepts it. Glory be to God. The word is Jesus. He is the word that accepts him. God sent his word to heal us. Oh, God. There's so much power in the seed. The word of God serves as a lens for life. These soils help us diagnose the kind of heart that's in us. But to understand how the good soil becomes ours in Christ, we need the rest of the story. Glory to God. The parables are great for running diagnostics but they cannot provide the cure. Only Jesus is the cure. He's the one that can provide the cure. John 12 and 24 lets us know, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Again, there is a seed on fruit-bearing soil. We've got to die. Long as flesh lives, we can't make it that way. We got to let ourselves know, no, nah, baby, you can't do that. <laughs> no, you don't need that. Put that chocolate cake down. June, put it down. You don't need that. Hey, glory be to God. Woo! June, shut your mouth. But God, do you know that? The, 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 just shut it. Flesh. You know, because the flesh want to act up. See, some of y'all think I'm quiet. But there's something on the inside of me that sometimes if the button is pushed, I have to tell June, shut up and sit down. Woo! Because June can nut up. June can act up. But you got to let the flesh know you don't rule here. Jesus rules here. Jesus abides here. He is my Lord and my Savior. Savior. He rules, he rules, he rules and abides. He is sitting on the throne of my heart. He's got to guide me. All right, I hear you over there. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, be my guide. Be my director. Jesus left. He went to the Father. And he's sitting on the right hand of the throne of God. But glory to God. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you alone. But I'm going to leave someone that's going to take care of you. He left up the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. He left it to teach us. To lead us. To guide us. If you don't know this Savior that I'm talking about, if you don't have the heart, it's time for your heart to become so. Maybe you're the one that your heart is right, but you just need to see it in it. Jesus is here. He's knocking on the door. He said, behold, I knock at the door. And if any man open the door, I will come in. And I will sup with him and he with me. 
Glory be to God. The Bible lets us know that all of us have sinned. Yes. And we've come in short of the glory of God, Romans 3 and 23. And then he lets us know in Romans 6 and 23 that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We all need Jesus. We all need him. No matter how rich you are, you still need Jesus. No matter how educated you are, you still need Jesus. We can do not do this on our own, but it's only through the help of God. And the word of God lets us know in Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth, yes. oh, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. May I tell you today that this is your day. Those of you on Facebook, this is your day. If you don't know Jesus, now is the time to accept him in your life. Stop trying to wait till you get it all together because you ain't never going to get it together. Not without his help. Glory to God. So we just have to yield to Jesus. And let him help us. And he will guide us and direct us. He will show us how to have a better life. And for those that have accepted Christ. And maybe you messed up along the way. Can I tell you that all you have to do is repent. Other words, tell the Lord that you're sorry and turn. Make a 180 degree turn away from what you were doing. Sure, the enemy's gonna keep bringing it to you. But you just turn. I learned not to do a 360. Because I learned when I do a 360, I'm back where I started from. So now I say 180 degree turn. Glory be to God. Will you pray with me? Will you accept Jesus in your life today? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you admitting that I'm a sinner that needs a savior. I'm sorry for my wrongdoings. I ask that you forgive me and I repent right now in Jesus name. Save me Lord. Your word says he that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I'm calling on Jesus. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I accept you. Jesus, I thank you Woo, for dying for me. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, I give you praise. I give you praise. I thank you for doing it for me. In the name of Jesus, I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. It is so. And so it is. It's just that simple. It's just that easy. Glory to God. And may I encourage you to find the word teaching church. Glory to God, whether it's a structure, whether it's on Facebook, find someone that is teaching the word of God. Woo! And let
let the Lord lead you and guide you and direct you. If you've accepted the Lord today, feel free to, to type it in. I've accepted Jesus or messenger us. I accepted Jesus. Woo. Feel free to email us at divine pwc at gmail.com. We love you. God bless you. It is our prayer. Go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen.